Greetings and welcome to Hope Lutheran Church here in Palm Desert. As always, we are so glad to have you here with us and thank you for joining us on this very special weekend because this is All Saints weekend in which we are reminded of those people who have gone before us, who have shaped us and shaped our lives and uh, just always are with us in our life. And so um, it is my prayer that God will bless you on this All Saints weekend in your time of remembering. Also, this is um, first Sunday in November, and so we do uh, the service of Holy Communion. So just call your attention to that so that you can, uh, if you wanna participate in communion, you can get the bread and the wine or grape juice and uh, be ready when that time comes during our time together here today. If you could, uh, just hit the subscribe, like, and share buttons um, because it's a great way for us to be able to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus uh, with the world, utilizing um, this tool of ministry, and we're grateful for that. Also, as an opportunity for you to give, to be able to support this ministry in very tangible ways because it's the only way that we can do this ministry is through your generosity. And we are thankful for whatever you are able to do. And we're hoping that God will continue to bless your life and continue to bless uh, this church at Hope Lutheran with the mission and the ministry that God gives us to do. Once again, may God bless your day and God bless this time of worship together. Thank you. Today we look at the epistle of James. Um, we are going to look at the first chapter of James beginning at the 17th verse. God's word through the book of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Perhaps you have heard the sayings, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. It's a quote of St. Francis of Assisi. It is usually directed at us preachers. Today in the book of James, we have the saying, an important saying for us to keep in mind, to remember, to memorize, to have it seep into us so that it may come out of us. James says, be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. The book of James is considered a part of the wisdom literature of scripture. Much like the Old Testament in the book of Ecclesiastes and Proverbs and Song of Solomon, they're all kind of classified under the wisdom literature. The book of James, the epistle of James, is considered that as well. There's oftentimes little sayings for us, little words, little things that, that maybe trigger some thinking for us and go, oh, aha, uh -huh. 
kind of interesting ways to remember God's word with some wisdom saints. But I also think of the book of James, not only as wisdom, but I also think of it as prophetic, a prophetic word of God for us. Now, the prophets in the Old Testament were not so much about foreseeing the future as fortune tellers. The prophets of the Old Testament were the spokespersons for God who described what was going on in that world and said, be alert, pay attention to what is going on here. You're not paying attention to those who are in need, the orphans, the widows, the poor, the oppressed, the people on the margins. And so James is much like that. James is that sort of that, that little bit of a, a poke and as a reminder of what we are to pay attention to because we get so distracted, right, in our lives. And so James reminds us about what is really important. So that's what we're going to think about and that's what we're going to look at today in the book of James, specifically with this one scripture verse. Well, actually two scripture verses that I want to focus on. First of all, to be doers of the word, to be doers of the word. And if you think about Jesus and his ministry and his teaching, it was almost always about us moving from hearing something to translating that into action. Think about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Just about everybody knows that parable. If you remember how the Good Samaritan is, um, uh, the Samaritan cares for the one who is beaten on the side of the road and takes care of him. And Jesus is responding to the lawyer who is asking the question, well, Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells this parable. And at the end of the parable, when we see that the Samaritan is sort of the hero of the story, the one who does God's will, Jesus says, go and do likewise. Go and do. Jesus' teachings are meant not only for us to hear and to learn, they're meant to be put into action. Go and do. So we preach the gospel at all times and we use our words. And as a preacher, it is always my hope and prayer that it translates into our own actions so that you hear a message, but then that message translates into your everyday, ordinary life. And James goes on to even talk about how that looks, even in, in our own behaviors, even in our own emotions, even in the ways that we then treat one another as well. I want to share a story about a time in which a message that I heard translated into some pretty significant action of doing, doing God's word. So I was at a conference with a number of people from the congregation where I was serving, and a guy sitting next to me on my left, his name was Bill, and we were listening to a speaker at the conference interview Bono of U2. And it was quite quite a compelling interview because Bono of U2 is very, very uh, involved in the AIDS ministry in Africa. So we were listening and it was quite an inspirational conversation they were having and Bono was very inspirational himself. After it all ended, after the speech and the conversation had ended, Bill leaned over and whispered in my ear, he said, we need to do something about the AIDS crisis in Africa. And I thought, wow, okay, well, let's talk more about it. And so we gathered a small group of people to talk about how we might, as a church, respond to the AIDS crisis in Africa. We came to learn that in the country of Mozambique at that time, 25% of the people in Mozambique were HIV infected. And so we targeted Mozambique as a place where we wanted to explore doing ministry there and responding to the AIDS crisis. So we sent a team of people and we went to Mozambique and there in Mozambique in a little town, well, in that, it's a big town actually, where people come and go kind of a crossroads called Chamoyo. That was the name of the town. We came to discover that this would be 
a wonderful and important place to do this. We found a leader in that community to help lead, to provide all the leadership in that community for this kind of response that we were going to be doing. So long and short, the story is that we built an AIDS clinic through those efforts. And we dedicated that AIDS clinic. I was blessed to be there to dedicate that AIDS clinic. And not only were thousands and thousands served through that clinic, but thousands and thousands were also served by the development of a school that came from that. Just, it just mushroomed into something that was even bigger and better. And so you, what you see then is that the power of doing, how God will bless the power of doing, and God will provide the resources needed for those things to happen when there is a vision of what God is planting in your heart. Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. Be doers of the word of God. There's another part to James that I want to focus on for a moment. And he begins this scripture by talking about the generous acts that we do. I mean, we share the generosity of this AIDS clinic in Mozambique, but, but James begins by talking about how important that each and every one of us, in our ordinary ways, in the best way that we can, are to be generous with our lives. That generosity of spirit, that generosity of heart is something that God deeply, deeply wants for each and every one of us because we've been created. God, who is generous in creating us and giving us all the blessings that God continues to give and, and to shower upon our lives, God wants us to reflect Christ in this world in our own acts of of generosity. That is why even in our worship service, when we talk about an offering, we don't talk about it as a collection. This is not dues. An offering is an invitation. It is an invitation to experience the generosity of God in our life by being generous to others. This is so important for us. So when we talk about sharing resources, when we talk about how we can give money, we're not just talking about keeping the lights on or helping the church to be uh, functional. We're talking about something that's far bigger and far deeper than that. It is about reflecting God in our own lives and reflecting Christ then in the world. It's a beautiful thing to be generous. I want to share just a personal word today because a year ago on Labor Day, September 4th, my mom finished her race on this earth. My mom realized her eternal rest. When I got word, and I knew that she was very sick and near the end of her days, when I got word that she had died, it was on that Labor Day morning and all I could think about was the song, the great hymn of faith for all the saints from whom their labors rest. It was a beautiful moment to think about my mom at rest with God. But when we talk about generosity, she was the greatest example for my life in being generous and being a doer of the word because she was always doing for all others. She was always practicing hospitality for others. She was always opening our home to anybody who wanted to stay there. In her later years, when she was, you know, struggling financially just to make ends meet, I looked over her books and her ledgers, and I said, Mom, you are giving 17% of what Ever income you receive, you're giving that away to the church. Do you really want to do that? And here I am a pastor. I should be celebrating that, but I was concerned. And she said, Tom, she said, there's nothing that gives me greater joy and pleasure than being able to do this, than to be generous with love 
the love that I feel from God. I'll never forget that kind of conversation because it was just, it was so humbling and it was such a witness to me. And it was such a reflection of the scripture today to be doers of the word. So I thank Bill and I thank my mom and I thank all those people in my life who have shown me what it means to be doers of the word. And so I say, dear church, dear hope, may we never stop, never stop doing God's word. Hear it and do it. Making sure that what we hear and how we live our lives translates into putting our love God's love into action. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, dear God, for your holy word that reminds us what it means to take the grace and the love and the power and the inspiration of your word and to live it, and to share it, and to be your church, to be a little Christ in this world, in ordinary ways and in extraordinary ways. Now as we open our hands and open our hearts to receive you in the bread and the wine, we just pray that you may strengthen us on this journey so that we may be doers of your word and put your love into action. Amen. This is the first weekend of the month. And as we do at this service, we provide an opportunity for you to receive the presence of Christ that comes to us in the bread and the wine. If we'd like to find a piece of bread, a cracker, a juice, wine, whatever it may be, um, to be able to share in this time, we certainly welcome you to do so. Before we do though, we would like to begin this service of communion with our creed and our Lord's prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together the perfect prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We remember our Lord when he was in that upper room on the night in which he was betrayed. When Jesus took bread in his hands, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. He gave thanks to God and he gave it to each one of his disciples saying, drink from this cup, all of you, for in this cup is a new promise and unbreakable covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. This is the body of Christ 
given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>